so I'm on somewhat of a personal mission today. So the person that we are renting the apartment off recommended a very good local restaurant. Now, you know, if the locals are recommending something, it's worth checking out. Now, obviously, some would argue that he has a deal with this restaurant where he sends his people there. But I'm aware of those kind of things and uh, I don't think it's one of those situations because having looked at the reviews, there are thousands of very, very good positive reviews about this place. The prices are European average, I guess. It's about what we paid when we was in Greece for a meal. Um, so it's about 10 to 15 euros for a meal, uh, which isn't too bad. Um, but the purpose of this is that we want to try traditional Montenegrin cuisine. What is traditional Montenegrin cuisine? Well, given that it's a Balkan country, like Bosnia and Croatia, etc, etc, the influences are going to be the same. So, of course, you're going to have Kaimak, which I absolutely adore. I love Kaimak. You're going to have Chivapi, which is uh, like little sausages, and I'm going to definitely get some of them if I can find some, because I love them things. Um, and you've also got um, Ivar as well. I don't know if they do that here, but it's like a red pepper paste. But then they also have some local dishes which are unique to Montenegro. So they have a steak. Now I'm not going to be able to pronounce this, but I will give it a go. I think it's Ingusi. Ingusi. I'm going to have to put the word and the pronunciation down below because I can't do it very well at all myself. But there is a steak that is quite popular here. And there's also local cheeses as well. So let's have a close look and see what traditional Montenegrin food is all about. On the way there, but I just had to capture this on camera. Like, look at this place. It's proper light. So I'll tell you an interesting story, right? So when we started this channel, it all began because of a similar street. So we was in Kos, but we wasn't quite in Kos. We was in a place called Antimachia. Antimatia, sorry, which is uh, basically where the airport in Kos is. And we didn't realize that Kos was uh, quite far away well, from uh, the airport. So we ended up staying near the airport thinking that's where the action was. And it wasn't. And it ended up being a very small little quiet town. And the town was quite similar to this in terms of the, uh, the, the style and stuff. Um, apart from that lovely mosque over there, which we're going to go and have a close look at in a minute. But it was, <laughs> there was goats and there was cockerels around here. And uh, we were walking around and I turned around to Tam. And I didn't know, I turned around to you. And I was like, oh, speak of which. And Doug's there. And I turned around to Tammy and I was like, you know what, we should make a YouTube channel. Because uh, we either accidentally do things that end up putting us in a cool situation or we intentionally do stuff which puts us in a cool situation and it would be interesting for people to watch those cool situations and so the Team McGrath journey really kind of began there but we didn't have a channel at that point but it kind of got our brains ticking and thinking well people might want to see our little weird adventures <laughs> and see this kind of stuff and you may have seen this in the previous video but there's a beautiful mosque there and uh, our apartment is not far from here. So when we look out of our window, we see both that and we see the steeple and we see the bridge, uh, the Millennium Bridge, which we did a video on previously. But uh, we're just heading back to the apartment to quickly uh, charge this camera up so we don't lose battery. Oh yeah. So uh, here you can see, look, I can't read this unfortunately. So someone may need to help me, but as, a, as a, you can see, it's a very much an Ottoman inspired building. I won't go in there because people are probably either worshipping or working away in there. I can hear some building work. But um, this is essentially on our doorstep, this area. And it's, it's I don't know if it's the old town, but it's part of it, I believe. And, uh, but yeah, sorry, as I was saying, so we're going back to the apartment to, uh, to recharge these batteries and uh, to go and decide what we want as well. We know a few of the things that we want to try, but we want to have a close look at the menu in advance. And to be honest with Tammy, it's always a good idea to give her the menu in advance. 
Because she will take a lifetime to decide, won't you, love? I'm a woman, what do you expect? <laughs> but here we go. Let's have a little look at this, look. That's pretty creepy. And, uh, the general rule of thumb is you should never go inside buildings in, uh, in Balkan countries because well, that's actually it's more, it's probably more that's, that's probably more uh, pertinent to Bosnia, to be honest. I don't know if that's as much the case here, but in Bosnia, it's uh, not advisable to go into empty buildings or buildings that are damaged that are empty because there's a good chance there could be an, an exploded device in there, and uh, that is not something you want to be dealing with. Blow me! <laughs> that car almost clipped me. Um, so I don't think that's the same here, but. Uh, Still wouldn't go rummaging around in an abandoned building without caution. All right, so the battery's charged now and ready to hit the streets again and go and find this restaurant. So let's go and have a look. I've had a bit of a rest. I needed it. <sighs> very, very little sleep. I'll tell you a bit more about that on the way. But yeah, let's go and find this restaurant. All right, so we're on route once again. And uh, this time I've definitely got enough battery to last because uh, I was a little bit concerned about that, to be honest. I didn't think I'd have, uh, have enough battery to be able to see us through the uh, the food. But uh, yeah, so for context, um, I uh, <clears throat> well, we caught a uh, a six a.m. flight into Podgorica today, and uh, what we had to do was we had to go from our hometown <clears throat> called Peterborough to uh, Gatwick Airport stay in Gatwick Airport Hotel overnight and, uh, and then at about half three in the morning roughly get out get dressed get the shuttle bus over to Gatwick Airport and then start our adventure now I've not been asleep since yesterday or since this morning and we're going the wrong way so Google Maps can always uh, we can always count on that to send us the wrong way um, so yeah I've not had much sleep so when we got in I had about an hour just to uh, recover and uh, yeah charge the old uh, battery second sorry oh yeah the call to prayer yeah so we can hear the call to prayer it's pretty cool and uh, yeah we're heading over to the restaurant now what's it called Sam do you know Here we go, so this is the place, and how well you can see it. Konoba Lanterna Porcaritsa. Probably just butchered that pronunciation, I do apologise. But, uh, yeah, we can actually hear the call to prayer from the local mosque over here, which is very, very nice. We do like the call to prayer. We've uh, heard it in a few countries now, and it's a really nice way to uh, to wake up actually when it happens in the morning well it looks like we're heading back home quickly because we've pulled what I like to call an Oman on ourselves so if you're not familiar with the channel an Oman for us is where we forget our card when we're going to a restaurant now what happened in Oman was we got to the restaurant they accepted card they're happy to let us pay by card but then our card carrier refused to uh, accept the payment, basically. Because um, we were in a foreign country, they thought some sort of fraud was going on. And so, uh, very narrow roads. Uh, they thought some fraud was going on, and so they kept rejecting the payment. So there we are, stood in Oman, having just eaten a nice big meat of, meal of camel meat. and. Uh, staring this guy blankly in the face, explaining to him, look mate, our bank's refusing the payment. We've got it sorted in the end, but that was less than enough and warrants the return home. But the cool thing is, is that we have quite an interesting old, old lift. Now I don't like lifts at all. Tammy's a bit better with them, but this lift you have to see for yourself. It is <laughs> very, very old and very, very rickety. And uh, I did get in it and uh, it was plunk into life 
but it didn't feel like it was going to stop at any point so i'm not going to get back in it but i will let tam help you or i'll let tam show you the lift so you can see it for yourself so this is the rickety old lift that bob was on about it's very um yeah i'll show you more on the inside but it's not very nice i don't know what's down there though there's like cleaning quarters as you can see is nearly at me. Here we go. Hello. All right, that's me. Number five. But here we go. So this is the lift. It is horrible. It is so tight. Oh, listen. It's so rickety. The door doesn't even shut properly. And look at it. It wobbles. I don't know if you can see it. Everything it is horrid. But it's got a mirror though. There goes. But yeah. Oh, that's the lift. Right, attempt two to go to the restaurant and as you probably just saw there from Tammy's little video she just kindly did there for me or us <laughs> um, that is not something I want to go through <laughs> on a regular basis I'm scared of lifts as it is but when you get in it it quite literally shakes like you stand you walk into it and you can feel the lift wobbling around <laughs> you can see the door wobbling as it's going up and it goes up ever so slowly so uh, not something I'm keen on doing but I really wanted you guys to see it for yourself so glad that Sam was able to share it with you because uh, well I weren't <laughs> but heading to the restaurant now all right people we found it it was nestled in a little back street but we did it and uh, I'm kind of hoping we don't need to pre-book to be honest because if we do then uh, yeah <laughs> Oh, perfect. Um, I'm wondering if there's a table available today. If there's a spare table or if we have to book. Thank you. Hopefully there's a table in it, Sam. <laughs> Didn't bring that one through. But yeah, look at this. This is well nice, isn't it? Proper, proper rustic. I think they're making a table over there for us, so yeah, nice one. I was thinking about that one. I um, I was I was looking to try like an authentic Montenegrin dish. Like, is, do you have like the national dish of Montenegro? National. I'm both on the grill. Okay. It's my recommend. And veal cutlet and. Uh, do you like maybe starter? Sure. Do you have cheese? The cheese starter? Oh, uh -huh, okay. Cheese. And the veal under the bell. Okay, veal under the bell. I've heard of this. Yes. This is the uh, traditional meal. Yeah. Is, is pod. Is pod sat, satsa? Satsa, yeah. Satsa, satsa. Okay, I am... Jeden, Molim. My recommend maybe on the big plate. This one yeah. and the lamb butt on the grill. It's, good. It's very good for me. Okay. I'm first one portion cheese. Yes. Okay. Yeah, cheese. Yes, please. One cheese. Okay. Cheese. That's English the one. Ingushi. Yeah, ingushi. Actually, do you have an ingushi steak? Is it called steak? Ingushi yeah. steak? It's good. Good? I'll, good. Try, I'll try that instead, actually. An ingushi steak. Okay, one Negushki steak, yep. one lamb boot, one... No, no, no lamb, uh, Engushi steak and uh -huh. Engushi cheese. I'll have, the, I'll have them two instead. So, one, one and then one steak, steak, mm -hmm. and then that's everything for me. And maybe, do you want to share some chivapi? And then some chivapi as well. Oh, chivapi not traditional. Not traditional? No, chivapi Turkish. Ah, okay. Do you sell, do you sell it here? Do you sell that here, Chivapi? Chivapi, yes. Okay. Chivapi, not traditional. But not traditional. Okay, no. okay, okay. I understand. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I'll try the I'll try the steak and the cheese and well, my wife will take a bit longer to decide. To be honest. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Thank you, Fala. Morning. 
Okay, so the first thing's arrived, we've got the cheese, and you can see here we've got some olives and we've got some tomatoes, so I'll start with an olive. We've been doing that for the last six days. Mmm, so. <laughs> really good. It's quite soft. Not a big lover of tomatoes, but I will try them. It's actually pretty good and <laughs> really sweet. The cheese and looks really good. The cheese does look good, doesn't it? This is traditional Montenegrin cheese. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like a really, really, really good quality mature cheddar. Try a bit. <laughs> and then, of course, I've got a Montenegrin beer. I've got to try one of them. That is pretty good. Okay, so we've also got some traditional warm bread as well. Let's look at this. This is nice and thick, isn't it? I can barely even tear it, mate. It's too hot. Uh, especially freshly baked that is. Ooh. Let's get stuck in. Ow, that is really, really hot. Hang on. Let's get your thoughts, Tam. Mmm. Is it good? Mmm. That is fresh, like stone baked, and there's some sesame seeds. That's actually really good. Okay, so the main has come, and we've got a mixed meat platter. And we actually got something similar in uh, Bosnia, didn't we? We did, yeah. If you recall, it was very, very similar. And then we've also got some kaimak, which is like a local, I guess it's cheese. Soft cheese. So I did save the bread specifically for this, actually, to try it with the, uh, the kaimak. So, I love Kaimak anyway, so I kind of know that I'm going to like this, but uh, I've tried this in Croatia before in Bosnia, so good. Wow! That's completely different to what I'm used to. So usually it's quite tart, but this is actually, it's like a thick, thick clotted cream with a slight cheesy undertone, it's hard to explain. So we've got some chivapi and we've got what is this like a garlic dip looks like it. So let's try it. <laughs> Winner with that. Let's try it with the climax, why not? Strange combo, but there are stranger things out there. That pairs so well. Look, you've got some more olives as well, look. Mm. So I'll quickly go through what we've got here, and then I'm not going to sit here and eat the entire thing in front of you, but I'll break down what we've got. So we've got like bits of steak, like we've got, these look like um, croquettes, sausages, chicken breast, we've got like a salad, this is like a garlic, I believe a garlic herb dip, I'll give that a go. Chips, mmm. Some chips. And then this is like, I believe this is like some sort of meat wrapped in bacon. Much better, um, vegan blanket. Yeah, kind of, yeah. All right, so meal finished and uh, we actually ended up taking it home in a doggy bag, which is very kind of them, they let us do that. We actually noticed the people next to us doing it. The portions are really good. I'm, I will say that the portions are crazy good. The meal that we had, they said it serves two, but nah, that would have served Bob, myself, and quite possibly one other. We've got a good appetite and that was the challenge. We had something similar in Bosnia, it was quite a bit cheaper. Yeah. It was 15 euros. And it was exactly the same thing, like a bunch of meat, some chips, some dips, really, really good. Just like a meat lover's paradise, which obviously, you know, we do like our, we do love meat, yep. Yeah. Just trying to get better and where we are. Okay, here we go. So, uh, thoughts of the food. Well, the food itself was fantastic, actually. So, I've never tried Montenegrin food. And to be honest, I did ask them for like, the most traditional stuff. And uh, I spoke about Chivapi. I know you may have heard in the conversation there. <coughs> I was, uh, he was saying it's not traditional. But to be honest, I was also getting the, the feeling he was trying to push me towards the more expensive items on the menu. I mean, originally I was gonna eat this traditional Montenegrin dish called 
Ispod Saka? 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 Oh, I'll go Saka. I'll put the spelling on the screen. Um, and I really wanted to try that, but it was like 20 euros for that alone. Bearing in mind, we paid an extra four euros for a meal for two. Yeah, exactly. So, and then I, I noticed on the thing, there was a platter for two for four quid more. And that kind of solved Tammy's problem because she didn't know what to order. <laughs> so, uh, and I wanted, I did want Chavapi, but he was trying to dissuade me from buying it, assumingly because it's one of the more cheap items in the menu. Um, but I think I have the bill. I have to show you the bill in my pocket later. I can try and dig it out now. I have no idea. Here we go. <laughs> I've got the bill. Try and get in a live place so I can show you. So, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. Let me try and zoom in. I don't know if you're about to see I'll just walk you through it. So, Podgorico uh, Svietlo, that's the beer, that was 3 90 Orangina, 2 80 Unguski Sia, Sia is cheese, that came to 7 30 for that cheese. That's the bread. Lepna is the bread, that was only 90 euros, which is, uh, well, 90 cents, sorry. Kuva, there's two of them, I have no idea what that is. So, I'm not entirely sure what that was. Um, Mileso, Mezzo, basically the mixed meat platter. That came up to 24 euros. And then the Kaimat came up to 660. And in total, it came up to 47, 30 euros. Now, <clears throat> I like to be as honest as I can on this channel. I don't like to, uh, I don't like to unintentionally like give a positive review just to kind of satisfy people. Yeah, you know, so from, from the food perspective, it was incredible. Oh, yeah. The food is very well seasoned, very well flavoured. I can see now why the place got good ratings, but I do in my heart of hearts believe, sorry if you're losing me a bit, it's quite dark. I do in my heart of heart believe that that was a tourist trap and that we had basically been directed into a tourist trap. Now, why do I think that? Well, I think that because I've not seen a tourist in Podgoritza for quite a while. Oh, look at that. That's pretty, isn't it? An example of another Ottoman style building. But I've not seen a tourist in Podgoritza for quite a while. And I've been here all day since early morning. And I got in there and the first thing I saw was tourists. And that set off alarm bells in my head. I was like, oh, OK. And the waiter, his English was incredible, perfect. And they was very grateful that I was giving Montenegro a go. But uh, he was very, he was a salesman first and foremost and the waiter second, mm. trying to sell his dishes, which is obviously his job. I can't hold that against him. He's only doing his job. Um, but ultimately, I think uh, he's, you know, I, I, so here's my theory. This is what I think is happening. I think that local hotels and businesses are working with this place to send any tourists their way and perhaps get a cut of the deal or something like that. I don't know. But when I went to the reviews, whilst we was waiting for the meal to be ordered, I finally clicked on. All of the reviews, all of these positive, wonderful reviews that I was talking about were from non-native people. People that have just arrived in Podgorica. So, short and short, I think we've been duped. <laughs> I think there's a scheme going on where, uh, it sounds like paranoia, doesn't it? Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> It's not unheard of, but I think there's a scheme going on where people like are saying, oh, you should go to this restaurant. It's really good. And you go there and it's like highly marked up because we walked past a kebab shop. Well, they called Chivapis and uh, that was like three euros for a chavapi or a couple of pieces of chavapi with the bread and stuff. So that would have done us just fine. But ultimately, I wanted to do a food review of Montenegrin food. Now, it may not have been the most traditional, but it was uh, it was a really good meal and a good example of uh, the portions and the food you can get. <clears throat> would I go there again? No. Do I like the waiting staff? I thought they were lovely, really polite, very friendly. All the, all the, their English was incredible. Their English was good. It was a bit awkward because they were like, <clears throat> the bill doesn't include a service charge. And we're kind of sat there thinking, well, you've just spent the entire bill trying to sell us a product. 
like <laughs> you were a good waiter but you were pretty much a salesman so uh yeah i uh I don't think I'll go again from the perspective of I, I try to stay clear of the tourist places. I don't like to give tourist places money because I'd rather give money to the small business owners who need it. You know, who are grafting out there, working hard, who need the custom. But that's just my opinion. You may have been there as a, uh, a local if you're from Montenegro or Podgorica and you may agree that it's a tourist trap or you may feel that it's actually a good price. I'll be interested to know, so do let me know. But anyway, we appreciate you watching. We hope you have a good day. And we're very pleased that you have joined us from this beautiful evening in Montenegro. And we shall see you very, very soon on our next adventure. And oh, look, ducks and cats. <laughs> and we'll see you on our next adventure when we go to Kotor, which is a beautiful seaside town. So let's go. See you soon, people. Take care.